Hi, this is Bill. We are beyond the gates today in Dana Point, and I have uh, Chris Justice with me. Thank you very much for being here this morning. First question, are you considered a painter or an artist, or is, is there a difference? Uh, I'm an artist. An artist, because you work in different medium, is that? Yeah, I, I don't like to limit myself to one particular medium, uh, nor do I paint one particular style. Now, but it all kind of blends in together at the end. You're going to have to forgive me. Some of my, my questions today will be from a point of naivety, so to speak. And, uh, I'm here to answer any question you need, sir. I'm learning. I was struck by on your website that you treated your art like a 9 to 5 type of thing. Uh, does that mean you're up at 6, working by 9? Um, I'm just thinking as an artist, a lot of times, oh, I get inspiration, I do it any time. Well, the, the, the timing that I put in my statement is actually not, I'm not actually working nine to five, it's the concept of having a career. Right. This is my career. Mm -hmm. This is what I am on the earth to do. Um, I'm up at 5.30, by the way. Are you? So, <laughs> not six, <laughs> 5.30. Okay. Um, yeah, it, that basically just um, explains the discipline that a That's professional artist needs to have. That's what I thought. Um, and, and, you know, I might not be working those exact hours, yeah. but I put in eight to ten hours a day on my art. Now, so. obviously, you have to run a business, but yeah. is there time for you to just, okay, I have to separate business and I have to be an artist now? Is there a conscious thing? You, um, you know, that's where I get spread thin yeah. uh, quite easily because not only do I get to make the art, but I also get and have to sell the art. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes the, the buyers don't come to me. I got to go to them. Go to them. Um, and I have conducted uh, the way I do business uh, based on how I was mentored by several businessmen that I had the pleasure of um, spending a lot of time with early on in my career. Where did you get, where did you get your start? How did you learn to do this? Was it a family thing? You know what, um, it's interesting you ask that question because uh, my parents always said that the talent skipped a generation. So my mother, father, uh, uh, father was a truck driver, mother was a teacher, mm. um, but my grandparents were, were singers and artists. Okay. Um, but my, my great aunts, uh, my great aunts and uncles in Norway are professional artists. They're getting up there in age, but they're still working and they still make a living uh, doing that. So it skipped a generation. Um, well, you mentioned mentors. Was it, were they artist mentors, business mentors? Both. Both. Okay. Both. Yeah. Uh, I had the privilege of, of meeting some, some very powerful um, men um, that took a liking to what I was doing. Mm -hmm. Obviously saw um, something in what I was doing early on. I mean, if you were to ask me, I, I'm not sure how good it was actually early on, but yeah. you have to start somewhere. Um, and that's part of the journey of this is that, you know, there, there is no pathway to having a career in making art. If you want to be a lawyer, you want to be a doctor, you want to be a teacher, there's a pathway yeah, to, sure. to make it there. Yeah. And if you work hard and do what you need to do along the way, that that destination will be there. There's there's no end destination ever in the art world. Yeah, there's there's just hard work and somewhat of blind faith, if you will. Um, and and I've always believed that you know the harder I work, the luckier I'll get. If, How would you describe your art? Well, it's contemporary art. Um, and it, and it bridges the gap uh, between impressionism and abstraction.
ask you about one piece that, that is on your, your website. It's the, I, I don't know if it's individual, but it's the faces. It's the it's portraits, it looks, yeah. The portrait looks like you've taken a picture, or did you actually have somebody stand there with their tongue out for... Uh, a, a, a little bit of both. Um, I, I do... I uh, found it fascinating. I of course, yeah, absolutely. Well, in the, in the, back in the day, it used to be that somebody would sit there with their tongue out for, yeah, yeah. you know, three hours, four hours, <laughs> five hours, whatever, whatever it be. Um, I, uh, I enjoy taking photographs. Thanks for your time here, man. My Appreciate pleasure. This Thank morning. you for coming. Folks, please come down and see Chris Justice's place and, and go on the website. Uh, again, your website is chrisjusticeart.com. You got it. I, I, I think you'll really enjoy some of his paintings here. And now, Bill from Dana Point, let's go to Susan. I'm here today in Laguna Beach at the Kush Gallery, and with us today is a very special guest, Vladimir Kush himself, who is often not around these these woods. So, Vladimir, welcome, and it's uh, I'm so happy to have you with us today. Thank you. And I do have many questions for you. This is such an unusual gallery. Your art is very unique, and I'm hoping you can start by telling us a little bit about where did this all start? Um, you're from Russia, and when did you realize you were an artist in the making? Oh, I didn't realize I'm, uh, that I'm an artist, you know. When I was a, a, little, a little kid, uh -huh. I wanted to be a fireman, I wanted to be a driver, anything, but I was drawing all the time. So all the kids were uh, saying, like, well, you're going to be an artist, but I, mm -hmm. I, I guess I inherited that, that gene. From my, uh, from my, uh, yes, from my father and from all his relatives, uh, oh, genetically it runs in the family. So you were from bit, a family of artists. It's not a family of artists, it's a family of scientists. Oh. <laughs> so they never became the artists. Oh, right. but, they but they all were inclined to literature, to cultural values, high cultural values and uh, arts, of course. So your life was filled with art and music and... and <clears throat> poetry and right. culture and all of that, and you grabbed onto the artistic side of it. And uh, did you ever go to art school? Yeah, I went to art schools all right. back in when I lived in Moscow. So. Now, how old were you when you had this passion for art started to blossom? A few days My mother ago? has taken me to, uh, to see artists that lived in our building oh. <laughs> upstairs when I was six years old. I see. And, so it yeah. started. So, and I started to take private lessons, and then I went to art school since I was seven. Oh, since you were seven? Yes. Oh, my goodness. Mm, you must have been a prodigy child there with a special artistic ability. Mm. I was doomed to be the artist. Doomed. Basically. Yes, that's it. That was a destiny. It was a destiny. Nobody right. doubted this. But now, the story of coming from Russia, coming from Moscow, here you are in Laguna Beach and other parts of the world. There's got to be quite a story that went with that. So when did you leave Russia? And what did you do with your artistic talents in Russia? Well, the first trip that I uh, made out of Russia was 1989. Oh. So basically, I moved to next year. It was 1990. So I lived uh, most of my conscious life, majority of my conscious life already in the United States. Mm. Mostly. Talk about your conscious life. Conscious means like I'm not counting into the years of I the see. childhood, but right. I'm like I'm saying, Got it. conscious, like I fully like conscious. Yeah, <laughs> I do like that. So your first trip out of out of Moscow, where where did you end up? To first explore the world outside of Russia. Uh, my first trip in 1989, I had a chance to visit uh, different places, including Hawaii. And, uh, and some other places like Arizona and uh, D.C. and New York and, you know, and I went back with a total intention of moving out of Russia because I never believed that uh, there's a future for the artists. Mm -hmm. So in 1990, I uh, had a show in Germany and then uh, along with my painting, my paintings were shipped out of Germany to Los Angeles uh, and I flew into Los Angeles. 
and landed here without knowing anyone. Oh my. Except for the guy who oh, okay. was supposed to arrange the show. And that and, was uh, it. and yes, and with like with five hundred dollars and and twenty five cents to make a phone call out of the payphone from LAX. Oh, and my this is how my uh, American Odyssey had started. But that was the beginning. I mean, but you didn't start with a bang. You must have your art spoke to you in many ways, and I would guess, and it, what did you do? Did you draw portraits on street corners, or yeah. did you get hooked up with a gallery? Yeah. Or? Yes, absolutely. I, I, so you did all sorts of things. I, I did, uh, I painted portraits uh, starting back in Russia. I painted portraits in Lahaina, and then when I came to Los Angeles, uh, uh, I, I actually made my way to Santa Monica Pier, and I, I did portraits over there, all just right. to survive. Just, just to, to survive. survive. Yes. So it really immersed you in a different kind of culture too. That's here in. Oh, that's the that's exactly what I was interested. in. I grew up as an artist already here in this soil. Yes. This soil is actually uh, responsible for bringing up this mm -hmm. this this tree. I see. I this understand. This metaphorical tree. The metaphorical tree. Now, when did that metaphorical tree start to emerge? Was it in? Yeah, it's oh, well, gradually, it's gradually, it's gradually. It's like it started, I always did it through those years, and maybe it took me 10 years until I found my language, language so, which is metaphorical. Real, metaphorical realism is, is different than surrealism because it's, well, you, you can explain the difference between the two. Well, we, we, we know of surrealism and, and the most classical you know, uh, representative of surrealism, you know, most the you know, way we used to. For, for all those years, and that's what people refer to, is Salvador Dali. But uh, he was uh, approaching metaphorical uh, ideas maybe in the early stage of his life, but he never pursued that as a method right. of Absolutely. his painting. So it, it is mostly, surrealism is mostly about distorting things. Uh, I do not distort things. I, I paint them as is, you know, but, but in a very unusual combination. Basically that uh, as um, uh, Argentinian writer Borges has put it, it's like constructing the bridge between these two unrelated and distant shores. And the more is deeper, the more deeper is a, <clears throat> is a gap in between those mountains. The more exciting is a walk on that bridge. So uh -huh. construct the bridge every single time. See, it's, it's things that says that is seemingly uh, uh, apart had become connected. 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 Part and part it's part like part a miracle. Part. So it while is. you walk on that bridge, you understand it's a miracle, you know, but you're connecting them. That's the only thing that the computer is not able to come up with, I this see. kind of ideas. Because computer cannot imagine that this Moon is like a piece of blue cheese. I would like to ask you about specific works. Are there any in here that you would want to talk about? Oh, yeah. About? This painting is called uh, uh, Last Supper because it refers to that event uh, in uh, Christian history when uh, Jesus Christ had announced that one of you will betray me. And that's, yeah. that painting depicts that, that very moment. Christ is represented with a sunflower, and it's, uh, it's, it's, it represents the light. So he's turned to his fathers. Well, in opposition to him, uh, Judas is represent, uh, represented uh, by this purple color, uh, hiding in a hood, mm -hmm. in, in the shape of that flower of anturium. He, he's, uh, he's grabbing onto the little knot uh, as a little purse with coins that he received for betraying Christ. So, uh, just giving you that example uh, of why these colors of the flowers represent the human emotions that uh, the disciples are experiencing after the historical words of Christ. Right. So all these different colors represent. So on the on the wheel color, and all the artists are referring to that sometimes, you know, there's colors that are opposite. That's why 
uh, yellow or orange is opposite to yes. two purples. You know, books, I see you have a line of books available as well, on uh, appealing to all different audiences. I see one here that is uh, a children's book, book with fairy tales, and, and um, I mean, this would be very inspiring to any child, I would, I would certainly guess. I'm looking at the Trojan horse there, and and oh my gosh, uh, flying ships and and really magical, wonderful things. And where does the poetry come from in a book like that? My father was tales? working with me since he was the one who brought me up as an artist spiritually. Mm. So he kept me on the, on his lap, you know, when he was doing the drawings for himself. Uh -huh. He was a, a specialist on differential equations for the main time, you know, for the for his main job. But that was his always a passion, the arts. So uh, he continued to write the descriptions for my art, so because he's always in course of what I do, and uh, we discuss oh, things. And he wrote those stories. Oh my gosh! Yeah, um, I would I would say this is not only for the kids; it's actually for kid adults. You know that expression, kid adults, Ch children. You know, adults with we great great imagination. Exactly, we all learn from them too. Yes. Right. And then other books, and now members. I see another one, Light for the Souls. Um, this is a fairly new book, is that right? This is like two-year-old books. Okay. Yeah, we have a, all together, like we have uh, quite a few, like seven publications that we published. Seven so far, all right. Seven, yes. Okay. The first book was published in the 90s. Uh, oh my gosh, I, I, I'm sorry, I have to look at this. I could just, I need to buy some. Look at this, The Last Supper with a... With a beautiful flowers there. This is, this is fabulous. It's a new type of um, of coffee table books because the for the description it refers us to uh, mythology, to world culture, including literature. So we've, uh, what's written in there uh, explains from the point of view of world culture uh, what is in the painting. Mm -hmm. Now. If okay, and here's another uh, one of his newer ones, Doors, Doors of Perception. Yes. Um, they all do basically the same, no real theme. Well, that's different things. For the soul, yeah, just, just different uh, Doors things. of Perception is actually uh, deals with more like uh, outside outlook on the world, while Light for the Souls uh, is insight in our own uh, own okay, selves. So. And interpersonal relationships, and you know things like this. But uh, it's two parts of the world that we need to see, mm -hmm. and uh, all together. Mm -hmm. That's true. Uh, uh, they they cannot exist one without another. Vladimir, it's fascinating hearing hearing all about your journey in life and how you ended up here and and about your amazing work. So I thank you so much for taking the time to fill us in on everything. Well, thank you. And, it's an honor. And, and I hope our, our residents in Laguna Woods will come and check the Kush Gallery out here. Yes, I, uh, we, we hope that we became uh, a landmark, a local and landmark. You <laughs> and you are a prime location right across here from thank you. Main Beach. Thank you. I appreciate uh, your attention. Okay. To us. Hi, this is Bill Beyond the Gates, and we are at the Coast Gallery here in Laguna Beach, and we're with the owner, Kevin. Kevin, first of all, thanks for your time. Thanks for having us. And thanks for the Coast Gallery. I mean, this is an amazing place. Why, thank you. We've been here for 24 years, and very glad to still be selling beautiful art. How, is, as an artist, now a lot of these questions have come from a novice point of view. How does someone become an artist gets displayed here? I mean, it's obviously not beginners. Right. This is an international gallery, but, you know, we always look for talent. And sometimes we find somebody in town and sometimes they're across the, you know, country. So is it like an audition process? Well, they submit, you know, their art and we either say it's something that we could work with or not. And uh, being here so long, we kind of get an idea of what our clientele that are international as yeah. well, not just local to the area. Like, Was this the, the original location? Yes, this was the original location. 
and we just opened up six months ago on Forest Avenue, mm -hmm. which is the main street. It's closed off to the traffic, right? Heard, but it's wonderful. Um, now, who was the brainchild of this? Well, I I got lucky to get in the art business thirty years ago, and basically I moved to Dana Point, came to Laguna, south of this place, and when I had a chance to come to this spot, I took it, mm -hmm. and I've been the biggest gallery in the downtown so far. Again, uh, asking from a novice's point of view, uh, there's there's so many paintings and different phases of art what, what what is what is a medium well there's several mediums most artists paint with oil or acrylic mm -hmm. some people paint with watercolors we actually have artists that paint with printer's ink and so the mediums okay. as well as a man who paints with automotive paint yeah. on aluminum who lights them on fire and uh they're very interesting when you say printer's ink is it like printers like the printer's ink? ink they grease up the printer to print out you know the the um the actual newspapers or but they're colored wow inks. very different they take a long time to dry and they're very unique now is there is a special time of year for or is it a year round you know we're fortunate to be in Laguna Beach which is an art mecca of the world mm -hmm. and obviously in the summertime there's the festivals that right. are wonderful and that brings out the local artists to give them a shot to be able to show their artwork for a couple of months but we're here all year round and in the summer we are busier in the winter we have less people but it seems like we have equal sales do you host events here oh we do we yeah. do about six events a year and we're having one next week and it's a nine-year-old prodigy from India and so basically their clients are notified and the media so is, are the are the events based around an artist's showings? Yes, one okay. one or two artists generally because that gives them a time to shine and the clientele that's been collecting them to actually meet and have some quality time and talk to the artists about what they're picking and what their inspiration is. Now, if somebody from the village just wanted to, you know, come in and put nice art in their, in their manners, this is a great place to go. We can find just about anything here. Yes, and as a matter of fact, speaking of the village, we actually had a man who works in one of the wood shops, and he's so talented. I bought some artwork from my house, mm -hmm. and we have one table that he did with an inlay, and he's incredible. I said to him, Jack, why can't you give me some more art? He goes, well, my wife likes everything I make, so it's so hard he, to you know, part with it. So, But he came down from uh, Laguna Woods, and it's just we just get some real nice people and clients. The place is gorgeous. kind of a long story. I, I didn't have any uh, education, so basically what I did is... Were you an artist? No, I can't draw a line with the ruler, but basically I have an eye for things that I think that I put in my home and my clients would put in my home. Mm. So, because, let's face it, who needs art when, you know, the world is in its current state with gas prices and the thing, yeah. but so many of my clients have beautiful homes and multiple homes that they want to have something that while they're in lockdown or, you know, to have beauty around them. Is there a medium that is the major seller? You know, typically we sell oils and acrylics, but like I said, my new artist, Arcade Latour from Montreal, who's internationally acclaimed, he paints with printer's inks and does these abstracts. That's, that, I find that amazing, Print, which, printer's ink. It's when you see the one behind you, it's absolutely in incredible, but they sell from five to thirty thousand dollars, and wow, 
Now, in all the years that you've been here, how is the, the taste in art? Has it changed? That's very interesting because I've always been a realism. I want to see, touch, and see the image. Mm -hmm. And at the traditional, you know, like Tuscany landscapes and things, things like that has completely changed. And now it's completely gone to contemporary or more modern. So I've had to completely adapt to new artists that I've had to co go after and that when you say Tuscany, is that a genre or the That's a genre place? of like, you know, a rolling hills with a villa like on top Italy, of a vineyard. An exactly. Italian, okay. Italian. But now everybody wants abstract or something less detailed, like less realism. Hmm. Kevin, thanks so much for your time here this morning. I know running a business is tough and you've taken the time here and this, this is a gorgeous place. And anybody in the village who needs to, you know, put some beautiful art on the wall, this is the place to come. Thanks again for your time. Thanks for having me, Bill, and the opportunity. And for those of you in Laguna Woods, please come and have a glass of wine. Sit here on my balcony, enjoy the view and the beautiful art. Even if you don't buy anything, just love to see you down here in the beach.